and welcome to Linear Sequences with Cubis Education. In this lecture you will define what a linear sequence is, find the term to term rule, find the nth term of a sequence and use the nth term rule to find terms in a sequence. Okay so let's start with linear sequences and what they are then. So this is a linear sequence. Okay a linear sequence is when the differences in the numbers are all the same. So you've gone up in an exact amount three add 3 is 6, add 3 is 9, add 3 is 12, add 3 is 5. So like a times table, okay, that's a linear sequence. Each number in the sequence is called a term. You can refer to terms by their position in the sequence. So if we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and 18, we can label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because they all have a number which is their position. This is the third term in the sequence because it is the third term, 1, 2, 3. The term to term rule is what tells us how we find the next term in a sequence and that's what we've got to find out. So if we have this sequence here, in order to find the term to term rule we need to know what the difference is. So we've found the difference and that's 3. So the term to term rule for the above sequence is add 3. write down the term to term rule for the following sequences. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at this please do. Okay if you've paused the video let's have a go. So add 3 for this one, subtract 4, subtract 6 and add 2. So that's the first bit, nice and easy. As long as you can do that you're fine. So what we need to do though is, let's say we were asked what is the hundredth term in the following sequence. Okay, so we have the same sequence and we want to know what the hundredth term is. We could carry on the sequence until we got to 100 by adding 3 each time, but that would take quite a while. So having a, a rule would help us in this situation, would be really useful. Okay, and we need to use that term to term rule that we've just figured out. And this means, this is called finding the nth term, or the nth term rule. So let's look at this sequence to give us something fresh to look at. Let's find the term to term rule. Okay, so plus 3 as you uh, again. So that means that our nth term rule starts with 3n. And the nth term is going to be an equation that we use to find any number in the sequence. So if it starts with 3n, okay, and the next bit you've got to do is think, look at the first number in the sequence, like this one here is a 4. And you need to think, what do I do to 3 to get to 4? And it's add 1. Okay, so we just add 1 to the end. So, I just want to explain that a little bit slower, and probably again. So, when we're finding the nth term, the nth term is a rule that we use to find any number in the sequence of numbers. So even though here we have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we have the terms... We have term 1, which is 4, term 2 is 7, term 3 is 10, and so on. But if we want to find the hundredth term, we need to use this rule. We can find out the rule for any sequence, any linear sequence of numbers by doing this. The first thing you do is find the term to term rule, which is the plus 3 part. Once you find the term to term rule, we can write it down. You don't need to write plus 3 because we know that it's a positive. Okay, we only put a negative there if it's a negative. So we don't actually have to write plus 3. Okay, so the beginning of it is 3n. Okay, and then we work out what we need to do to get from 3 to the first term, which is 4. And it's just add 1. Once you've worked that out, now we can use it to find out what the hundredth term is in a sequence. So, <clears throat> let's try and find the nth term for this one. Here we can see that we go down minusing 4 every time. So our term to term rule is minus 4, which means it starts with minus 4n. We then have to work out how we get from minus 4 to 20. Well, minus 4 plus 24 makes 20. Because we need to get out from the minus uh, side and up to 20, which means we need to add 24 to it. So that's your nth term rule for that sequence. You can also write it as 24 minus 4n. So pause the video and try working out the nth term for these numbers uh, for these sequences. 
Okay, if you've had a go, let's have a look at the answers. So the first one then, well, all of them. So here it's a plus five here, okay? So it must be five N. To get from five to six, we just add one. Here we are adding nine every time, so it's nine N. And to get from nine to three, we need to take away six. Here, we are taking away two every time. And to get from minus two to, to 19, we need to add 21. So if you wrote it as minus 2n plus 21, that's fine as well. With this one, you are subtracting 4 every time. So it would start with minus 4n. Okay, and then you need to add 25 to get 21. So yours might have looked like minus 4n plus 25, which is absolutely fine. This still means the same thing, 25 minus 4n. On this one, we can see that they are taking away, um, sorry, adding 3 every time. So minus 8, add 3 is minus 5. Add 3 is minus 2. Add 3 is 1. Add 3 is 4. So it starts with 3n. And then to get from 3 to minus 8, we need to take away 11. Okay. And then finally, you can see that they are taking away a half every time. So take away a half gives you 1. Take away a half gives you a half. Take away a half gives you zero. Take away a half gives you minus a half. So it must be minus a half n. And to get from minus a half to one and a half, we need to add two. So yours might look like minus half n plus two, but you can still write it like this. Okay. So if you got all those right, um, and if you didn't, I hope you understand them now, um, you should now be able to use that method to find the nth term. Now, once we've found the nth term, we need to use it. We need to use the nth term rule. So, find the first five terms in the following sequence. Okay, so we have 3n plus 12. That is an n nth term rule. Okay, and it wants us to find the first five terms in the sequence. So, the first term. Now, the first term, because we've got this n, the n is where the number goes for the term okay so this technically means if I'm trying to find the first term one would go here so we would do three times one and then plus 12 okay giving us 15 okay so if we are going to find the second term that means that two must go where n is so we do three times two plus 12 if you can't remember, then anything that's next to each other like this, it means times. So we must times 3 by whatever n is. So 3 times 2 then, because we're trying to find the second term, plus 12, gives us 18. If we're trying to find the third term, we need to do 3 times 3, plus 12, giving us 21. And then the fourth term would be 3 times 4, plus 12, equals 24. And finally, the fifth term is 3 times 5, plus 12 is 27. So that is how, or that is how you might have to use the nth term rule in your exam. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and try and find the first five terms in the following sequences, okay? So I'm hoping there's only five, yeah. Okay, so pause the video and have a go and press play for the answers. Okay, if you've had a go, we have 4n minus three. So if you've forgotten, we're trying to find the first five terms which means n must be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And you must create five separate equations. 4 times 1, take away 3. 4 times 2, take away 3. 4 times 3, take away 3. 4 times 4, take away 3. And 4 times 5, take away 3. And there's so on for all the others. 4n minus 3 then, you should have had 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. 6n plus 5. 11, 17, 23, 29, and 35. 3n minus 12, minus 9, minus 6, minus 3, 0, and 3. If you struggled on that one, I suggest you go back and watch the video on multiplying and dividing negative numbers. That would really help you for that one. 9 minus 2n gives us 7, 5, 3, 1, and minus 1. And finally, 22 minus n will give us 21, 20, 19, 18, and 17. Okay, so um, I hope 
that makes sense and I hope you understand how to use the anchor tone rule in that sense. Any problems, let me know. Email me at info at cubaeducation.com or just comment on the lectures. Okay, so the next way that you're going to use this nth term is by checking if numbers appear in a sequence. So an example question would be, does the number 48 appear in the sequence 3n plus 12? Okay, so we have a sequence, okay, and we need to set up an algebra equation. So 3n plus 12 is this here, 3n plus 12, that's our nth term rule. And it's saying, does the number 48 appear in the sequence? So we're going to make it equal to 48. And then we're going to solve it like we would a normal equation. So we're going to take away 12, leaving us with 3n equals 36. And then we're going to divide by 3, leaving us with n equals 12. Now, because n is a whole number, okay, this means that it does appear in our sequence. It is the 12th term in the sequence. Okay? So if they ask you, does the number 48 appear in the sequence? You would do it this way, and you would know because it's a whole number. If it says, uh, what is the 12th term in the sequence, okay, you would then be able to work out that it's 48. Does the number 70 appear in the sequence 3n plus 12? Let's try this one. So let's set up our equation then. 3n plus 12, but this time it's equal to 70 because it's asking us, does 70 appear? So we take away 12 like we would normally in our equation, leaving us with 3n equals 58. And then we divide by 3. So n equals 19.3. But because our number is not a whole number, it's a decimal, it's not an integer, it means it does not appear in the sequence. Okay? Okay, so why don't you pause the video and have a go at these three questions and press play for the answers. Okay, if you've had a go, is the number 20 in the sequence 2n plus 4? Uh, yes, it's the eighth term. Is the number 35 in the se is number 35 in the sequence 4n plus 7? Yes, it's the seventh term. And is the number 22 in the sequence 2n plus 3? Well, that would be 19, 19 divided by 2. Okay, so you would get a decimal number, so you would we know that it's not going to be in there, and we can say because it is a decimal, not a whole number, or not an integer. Okay. Okay, so last little bit now about sequences, and this is sequences from pictures. So we have um, our three different pictures, and I'm going to label them 1, 2, and 3. Now 1, 2, and 3 is our n value, okay, because this is our first term, it's our second term, and this is our third term as always. So number of tiles, 2, 5, and 8. Okay, so if there are two tiles in this one, five tiles in this one, and eight tiles in this one. Okay, and we know it's a linear sequence, it is going up by three every time. The nth term rule for this then, we must know, would begin with 3n. Now 3n, n is our term, 3 is our term to term rule. What do we need to do to go from 3 to 2, and that is to minus 1, okay? So we need to take away 1 to get to 2. And that is our nth term rule for this sequence. What about this one? Why don't you pause the video and have a go at this question? Okay, if you've had a go, the pictures on the left show chairs around a desk. Work out a formula linking the number of chairs to the number of desks. Okay, well, we have our different terms here. We have term one, term two, and term three. Term one, um, number of desks is one desk, and number of chairs is six. Um, the second term is two desks and ten chairs, and then three desks and fourteen chairs. So that goes up in a linear sequence, okay, it's plus four, which means our nth term must start with plus four. Then how, well, or four, four n, how do we get from four to six, and we need to add two, okay? Four n plus two, we don't need this plus, I don't know why I keep writing it, ignore it, you don't need it, four n plus two is fine. Okay, so well done if you got that right. Now then, how many chairs would be needed for 10 desks? Okay, I forgot about that question. How many chairs would be needed for 10 desks? So what we need to do then 
is write down our nth term rule and 10 desks would be our 10 going along here which means it would be our n so we have to put 10 into our equation 4 times 10 plus 2 is 42 so how many chairs would we need for 10 desks 42 chairs okay so Define what a linear sequence is, okay, a linear sequence is where it goes up by the same value every time and it's just added on, not multiplied. You have learned how to find the term to term rule, which is just your plus 3 or plus 4 or minus 2, so whatever the sequence goes up in. You have found the nth term of a sequence and had a go at some questions, and you've used the nth term rule to find terms in a sequence. So well done, that was quite a lot actually. Um, thank you so much for using Cubit Education and I look forward to seeing you next time.